<sighs> hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about wood hinges and wood hinge design. Now I've been doing wood hinges for years and years. Um, and I've got them on lots of different projects. I did a video earlier on. You could do a search on my channel for wood hinges and you'll find it. I may even have a couple. But I like wood hinges because they really add to any project that I built. And now everybody looks at that and they know that that was actually hand built for sure rather than store bought when they see wood hinges on it. So I really just adds a level of being proud of what you did when you're done. The problem is, is that making hinges can take away from doing a project normally. So I tend to make hinges and most of the time I get an idea in my head and I'll make five or six sets of hinges uh, and throw them in a bin. And then I, when I need hinges, I go in there and I look through my bin selection and I pick some hinges that I want. Well, my problem is that I guess it's been a while since I've done any hinges in my shop because, or at least made any, because I only have four sets of hinges left. Check this out. This was the first set I ever did. And don't make fun of them. They are ugly. And, but, you know, that's what happens. So I've, since then, I've made maybe even hundreds of them, I would say. But that might be an exaggeration. I don't know. But you get better and better as you do it, and you learn to do it different ways. Uh, probably the easiest one to make, and I'm going to focus on that for this video and for the, some future videos, because we're going to actually make a set of hinges. But we're going to take this to a new level so that you will actually learn something here. Let me show you what OTB Thinking will do for you. So I've taken this block and I asked you know who into and I said, you know what this is? And what it is first is it's a real straight grained piece of white, uh, white oak that uh, is cortisone. It's four and a half inches wide, five inches tall and six quarter. So, and I said, well, what is that? She says, it's a block of wood. Well, she's kind of right, but that's not what I see here. What I saw when I, when I saw this and I picked it out, I saw four hinges, four complete hinges, not a block of wood. It's a good straight grain, grain wood, hardwood. This is perfect for making hinges. So what I'm going to do is I'm making a new design hinge that I've never made before. My hinges up to now do have a certain amount of similarity. They're all kind of just butt hinges type of style. So... Uh, but this is going to be four different hinges. I'm going to cut it down the middle this way, and I'm going to resaw it this way. When I get done, that will give me four blanks. And this is the design of the hinge. I'll put the two fingers down, uh, excuse me, the two relief finger down here, and the one relief up here. So there's two fingers here, and one finger down here, so that when I cut it apart, the top half fits into the bottom half to become the hinge. Like this. So if I take this hinge here, take it off the pin, and if I turn it around, line it up, lo and behold, that's a perfect green match. That's because that used to be one piece, just like that. And after I made this, put the, the fingers on each end of this little piece of wood and drilled a hole, got it everything to where it looked good. Then I took and cut it apart and I put it together and put a pin in there and I have a complete hinge out of one piece of wood. And that's the theory. So each one of these blanks is one full hinge. Now when I make them generically, a lot of times I don't even take them this far. Um, sometimes, let me put this back together before I lose part of it. So most sometimes I will take and I'll make them like this. This is the same as those. This is two complete hinges, but I haven't cut it apart here yet so that this piece will fit onto this one. But So I'll store this, and when I'm looking for hinges, I'll look at that and decide, can I use that? And that's what I do. I kind of go shopping for the hinge. This is another one I made, and I haven't even put fingers on this end here yet because I'm even toying with the idea of doing, oh, I know why I didn't do this. And this one got damaged. You can see that, and this will happen to you. Can you see that damaged corner? Yeah, right there in the center finger. Big chunk gone. It's very unfortunate that happens sometimes when you're making these things. You got to be careful. 
So I have learned to do this by hand more than using my tools after I make the initial cuts. When I round them off in that, I find that doing it on a belt sander and doing it by hand is much safer than trying to do it with a router. Don't try it. Yeah, believe me, it just too many times you get a rip off, you get it tear out. So, um, but we'll talk about all that as I make the set of hinges because I'm going to take this set of four hinges and I'm going to make over several videos. And as I do each step, I'll either show you that step as I do it or I'll show you the result of that, what I did and explain to you what I did and show you what it looks like now that I've done that. And we'll take this through the whole process of making some hinges. But there's a bonus here. So, not only do I have those, but what do you see here now? Huh? It's eight quarter, it's 14 and a half, and it's nine inches across. And what I see here, actually just a hair over nine inches, but what I see here is 24 hinges. Just like you see four hinges here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six blanks on here. So if I get four out of this and I have six blanks, yep, yeah, 28 hinges, just kidding, 24 hinges out of this one little block of wood. This is Padot. It's a real hard wood, so I think it'll make pretty good hinges. And we are going to make these a little different this time than we've ever made them before because instead of the characteristic butt joint look, I am going to also uh, change the design potential of it. So when I cut these down to blanks, I won't do the final cut, but you see how I have this cut on this and it gives this design. This is one half of the hinge. This is the other half right here out of the one piece. And then when you put it together, let me show you my drawing. So when I put it together, yes, email. When I put it together, I can put it together in this configuration or I can turn it upside down and put it in that configuration or I can put it in this configuration or turn this one upside down. So there's lots of different ways I can do this if I want. Uh, I can do other things with it. If I make them all pretty much identical to this one, I could even interchange half of this with half of those, theoretically. That's way beyond the scope of what we're doing here. But for now, we're going to be going through, and my main focus will be on this. As we go through this process, I'll show you all the different steps, how I did it, so you'll know how to make them. I'll also show you how some of them I'll take all the way through to a final hinge, but some of them I'll just leave it as a big blank without even cutting this last line here. So they'll be in different phases along, and I'll have a place where I can go through and kind of pick out the ones that I like the best for the job I'm going to be needing them for. And I'll have some ready-made hinges to go. So uh, I'm pretty excited about doing this. And I thought, why not? Well, even though you go along with me, maybe you'll have some suggestions so we can make these even better. So that's the plan. This is a project that's going to take, like I say, a long time. You only get bits and pieces as we go through it. So you have to watch all my videos. And I could take up to a year to make all these things. So you may actually have to put up with me for a whole year if you want to learn what's going on here so uh, one more quick thing about this hinges and that is that hinges are not always uh they're I, some people think they're not as strong i wouldn't want to use that you got to use metal that's not true either let me show you real quick i have this cabinet here that i've had for years in the shop and it's been a really good old cabinet and i can take this here and I have all these tools hanging on this door. This door has a wide panel with a three quarter inch board here, which is heavy plywood. And I have tools hanging on the inside. So just imagine how much weight I really have hanging on that door. But yet at the same time, here, check this out. On there for a hinge, look what I got. I had this nice wood hinge. It's five eighths of an inch thick, or not actually nine sixteenths of an inch thick. It's five finger. And it's, I only have two of them on this, holding this door on. So with two hinges, I'm holding that door on there with all those tools on it. So I'm not afraid of using wood hinges uh, instead of metal hinges for the job they have to do. 
And no, I will not climb on that door and swing it back and forth while I'm hanging on it. Then I don't think it would hold up. But under normal use of what I think it'll do, I don't think that hinge will ever fail for on me. So, and it works just as good as the day I made those hinges and put them on there, on that door. So, uh, don't let anybody tell you that they can't be strong. They can be. And you can make them as dainty or as strong as you want. Like this. I left these thick because that way I can shape them, I can carve them, I can do lots of different things because they're so thick. These was one of my original design when I got Incra, and this was based on how they show you how to make hinges. And I made a couple that way, but I don't like their method particularly. And this was the very first set I ever made. Don't make any fun of them, but they are ugly. So, yeah, they, they didn't turn out very well at all. They don't really turn very well or hinge. So uh, I really was disappointed, but I knew what I did wrong after I got done and I learned since then. And now my hinges fit together actually pretty nicely and they really do work freely. So you can get a good working hinge once you practice with it. So you'll be making some, you'll be making mistakes, come up with new ideas in your head how to make them. But right now, on this first part of the series, we are definitely going to be looking at strictly what I call the three-finger hinge. Two on one side of the hinge and one pin in the center on the other side. It's an easy one to make. You can make it on a table saw. You don't even need a dado blade if you really want to do it that way. It's no big deal. I do it with my Incra. I'll show you how I make the fingers on this and get them to fit nicely. And then we'll go from there. Um... If you have any questions about this, any ideas, any suggestions, or maybe you have some information about some that you've made over the years, I'd love to be interested in hearing about it. Pictures especially. You saw my email address. But I think we're going to stick with this simple design to begin with. I think it's flexible, more flexible than this for using, than the butt joint design. But And some of them I'll take all the way, some of them I'll only have cut down with the fingers on them waiting to see what I'm going to do with it so and we'll just do this together over the next probably could take like I said up to a year I'm rambling aren't I okay we're done I want to thank you for coming by leave your comments and any suggestions if you like this video or you learned something here hit that like button so most importantly though as the sign says please come back again because I'm done with your dud and thanks Larry We'll see you guys soon.